You may have realised by now that I really, really love snowy conditions. Even if it is uncomfortably cold and I feel like my toes will fall off, the photos are always worth it. A few years ago, I saw that it was possible to photograph puffins in snow and it quickly became one of my targets. In this video, I'm going to Honoya Island in Arctic Norway. And I'm going to share the techniques I used to get my photos. At the end, I'm going to share how you can join me to photograph puffins next year. Thank you, MPB, for sponsoring this video. It's a short walk from the B&B to the boat. Getting closer to the island is always overwhelming. It's only a 15 minute journey and we're on the island. I'm going to be spending three days on the island and I have several different shots in mind. But I'm also excited to see what else I can capture. Eighty thousand seabirds nest here and the sound is incredible. The island is chaotic and there is so much going on. But amongst the chaos, you see bird couples. Okay, so I was going to tell Juan some facts about puffins that can help him with filming, but we thought we'd just tell everyone. These puffins haven't actually been on land since last July, and they've literally spent the whole winter in the sea fishing, and they only come onto land to breed. So this is a really important time for these birds because they haven't been with their partners all winter. It's a time for the puffins and all the seabirds really to re-establish their bonds. So they will they will get their bills with their partner and like tap them and that's like their way of kissing. And they're spending these next few weeks just basically pairing up with their partner again. But the funny thing is, is that even though they are partners for life and they mate for life, they actually don't genetically mate for life and they will often sneak uh, matings with other puffins because in a evolutionary perspective it's actually beneficial to have offspring with different partners. But the reason they stay together for life is because over the years they will learn how to basically be parents together. They'll learn how to take turns in terms of incubating eggs, fishing, and so that's why they, they partner for life, but not always make for life. When you're surrounded by so many birds, it can be difficult to know where to focus. When photographing birds in flight, I usually find one bird in the distance that's flying towards me. I lock focus, and when it starts to fill the frame, I start recording and taking my photos.
One image I thought would be incredible to capture was puffins fighting. Although their nests are really close together, they will often have fights with neighbours. So look out for fighting puffins as well. I've never seen so many puffins fight, but they really do go for each other. They never came away injured. The worst was just losing a feather or two. To get the shots of the puffins fighting, I would watch the puffins closely. I sat close by a large group and waited. When I could see some puffins were gaping, which is when they opened their mouth, I knew I needed to be ready with a high shutter speed. I want to say a big thank you to MPB for sponsoring this video. MPB is the largest global platform to buy, sell and trade used photography kit. It's super simple and safe. I've actually bought my 5D Mark IV, which is my camera trap camera, and my EF 100-400 from MPB, my 300mm f2.8, all my teleconverters are also from MPB and three years on I'm still using my 300mm lens pretty much every day. I really like MPB just because it's so safe and I can easily get a quote on the website. If you want to buy, trade or sell used photography kit, MPB is linked in the description. I really want to get a variety of shots. I'd really like to photograph puffins in the water, but they seem to be rafting quite far from land, so I'm not sure how possible that will be. But I've also brought my flash, so I might try some wide angles with the flash. In my experience, puffins are super chill with flash, but I'll test it with these guys, see how comfortable they are with it. If they're not, I won't use it. So there's two puffins, I'm going to try and get a wide angle of them, but they're quite nervous so I need to subdue it so they can't see me. Also, it's covered in poo, this area. Okay, so I'm going to try some wide angles and it's a bit tricky because I need to be quite close to the birds and the best way to do this is just to approach really slowly, see how they behave and if they get nervous I need to go back uh, slowly because I don't want them to all freak out. Um, but at the moment there's some guys trying to photograph them so I'm going to wait until they're done because I don't want to get in their shot. <laughs> I didn't end up using a flash at all. The snow reflected a lot of light. These are probably some of my favourite shots. Once I know I've got some flight shots and portraits, then I try to get creative. It was very easy to get high key shots. This is when you have a very bright white background 
and this is very easy with the snowy backdrop. Sometimes creative shots come randomly and you don't find them until you're actually reviewing the photos on a computer. Sometimes it's on purpose and sometimes creative shots just happen by accident. It's always sad to say goodbye to the funny and charismatic puffins. And that takes me to the end of my Arctic adventure. Well, almost. I still have one more mini adventure, but I need to wait for darkness. I hope you enjoyed the video. I now have something very exciting to share with you. Next summer, in 2024, I am hosting a photography trip to Iceland and the targets are puffins and arctic foxes. It's going to be so incredible photographing these species against an Icelandic landscape. I'm hosting this trip with Inspired Ventures and I've been working with them for basically the past six months, we've been working on getting an itinerary that maximizes photography time and wildlife time. And we've decided to go for a small group size just because we want to limit any disturbance to wildlife or the Arctic foxes and also give everyone the best photography opportunities. And therefore there are limited spaces. So if you are interested, you probably need to book soon-ish. I am super, super excited and it will be so cool to share this experience with you. So if you'd like to find out more, everything will be linked in the description, including the itinerary and maybe see you in Iceland. Thank you for watching the video. I know a few videos ago I said that I've got something really exciting and I've basically been filming a video series and 
it's adorable, it's emotional, and it will come out this summer. My patrons know, so if you want to sign up to Patreon, you can find out what's been going on. More on that soon, but thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Bye!